Gamers, welcome back to Spellbreak. So today we got a really interesting set. This one is actually going to be from our friends from across the Pacific Sea, the Japanese. This is a really cool set against the Riri, who is one of the best Alice players out there. And a mailing that I had never heard about until I watched this replay, his name is Beikoku, which means America in Japanese apparently. And well, I'll let his gameplay speak for himself because I think he plays incredibly well. Anyway, so these guys are going to be bringing out pretty standard decks as far as these characters are concerned. Alice is going to be bringing three doll placements, four doll activations, 2,000 spear dolls, which, you know, these are all pretty much standard. 1,000 spear doll is oftentimes used to catch border escapes. And then Little Legion, um, the four card explosion, and the two card explosion. So nothing crazy there. The only crazy thing that the mailing player is really bringing is Grimoires. He does have two of them here. Which is, you know, not something that you typically see on mailing. You might occasionally see it like on a patchouli, but everything else, pretty much normal. You got the five cards, you got the four cards, uh, yellow quick kick, kick of showering brilliance, really standard stuff. The interesting part about these players isn't really what they bring um, in their decks, but rather how they play and how they use them. So let's jump in. All right, so pretty much these two players, um, the way they kind of play this set is that they put in a lot of like commitment and make some crazy moves. I've seen a little bit of this set before, and some of the like tech that they do is really advanced. So they're mailing charge into that uh into that doll, so he actually got punished for that. J6A whiffs, and he manages to fly out of air pressure there. So Okay, there, the mailing gets an air attack. And now he's kind of stuck up in the air, so Riri tries to come down and follow him with that 6-6-C on the ground there. And the point of that is to try to catch people with it whenever they land so that they can't jump up um, immediately again. But he was ready for that, he just stayed and flew back up. Alright, so how's he going to defend against this? He actually gets caught by the 6-C, which is an interesting bit of tech to throw out that 6-C before that far away 2-1-4, because it allows it to be a little bit more safe. Okay, that was a really nice J2A cross up there. Ariri blocked it correctly, but it was able to push him further into the corner on that side. So now, ooh, right there, gotcha, big cross up. So what he was able to do was that he was pretending that he was going to go for that J2A cross up again, which he already just showed him, but instead of doing that, he jumps straight back down and goes for a ray, which is very confusing. It's a good combo right there. All right. So now the mailing is holding on to that 4 card, he could use that to combo, but he's instead going to hold on to it, probably because he can get a lot of advantage out of Sun Shower. Alright, J8A, catches him with the laser, and there's the knockdown. So, what's Ariri going to do for Okizeme? Usually what you see Alice players do is they'll throw out one doll, jump up, and then they'll try to go for like a cross-up J5A. Let's see how one of the best players in Japan decides to do Okizem in this situation, because he's got a good, a good knockdown. So yeah, there's the doll, and yeah, that was not quite a cross-up, but it was a little bit ambiguous, so it was able to put him back into the corner. I think that's one of the better ways to do just simple Oki as Alice. Again, yeah, follow his wake up and throw out a 4A. Or I guess that was a 5A, actually. Alright, so here, against Mei Ling's, typically you're going to want to look for either a border escape against 6A or 3A, or if they're staggering um, F5A too much, you can mash after it. Let's see what Ariri does. So he wrong blocks there. Wrong block again. Ooh, and he tries to border escape right there, actually. Um, right into the red cannon. Um, he does a border escape forward, which was actually not what um, Beikoku was expecting. He was expecting the border escape upwards, which is why he threw out the red cannon. But Ariri was ready for that. He border escapes forward. There's the punish. Slap in the leg. Alright, what do we got now? So... J2A, looks like he's keeping his pressure a little bit more loose to try to kind of bait out an escape. Let's see what Ariri does. 6A there, could have border escape, but he doesn't. And now he's going to wait for the last hit of the string and press F5A afterwards. So that's sort of, it looks to me like that's what Ariri is making his decisions based off of. He's trying to guess when uh, Beikoku is going to throw out that border escape catch and he's trying to just 
counter predict it and keep blocking or do a border escape to beat it out and then escape afterwards. Ooh, there's that variable cross up for Aoki again. Ariri with a really good job doing those consistently in the game. So let's see what Beikaku does to adjust to it. To start of the round, what you can see is that Alice is flying up a little bit high in neutral. I guess what she's trying to do is she's trying to avoid the distance where Mei Ling can throw out 6C or 5C and sort of stuff out attempts to approach with dolls. That's, that's my guess. And also, in general, Mei Ling is really fast and she's got pretty substantial buttons on the ground, so it might be hard for Alice to contest her there. Ooh, River Mist there basically makes it harder for Oki Zema to happen. Alright, it looks like Beikaku, a lot of what he's doing against Alice is approaching and then chicken blocking in the air, which makes it more difficult to, for Alice to continue winning neutral, because if you're in the air, you know, Alice doesn't have big air unblockables like other characters do, so it puts you into a little bit of an advantage. Alright, knockdown. What are we gonna do for Okizeme? 4C, J2C, and okay, so there he pre he doesn't predict, he actually just reacts to it. He sees that he woke up, and now he's a little bit far away, so I think at this distance a J5A might be, you know, might not work out, so maybe he can throw out like a J6A to try to catch an escape. Let's see what Ariri does. Yeah, he went for the J5A there, and it whiffed. So it was actually able to put him um, into a better position, but I think Baycock had waited a little bit too long to escape, probably expecting a J6A was going to hit him. Oh, he tries to get greedy with a second J2A cross-up. And yeah, gets a cross-up. Look at this guy! He's just- oh my god, he just keeps throwing out those J2As! What does this man know that I don't? Teach me your secrets, Beikaku! Alright, Grimoire. Fucking Grimoire for some reason. Okay, J2A. He's really like threatening these cross-ups, and I think the reason why it works is because, well, Alice can maneuver around cross-ups with um, really quick walking movement, but just because she doesn't have those air unblockables, it's harder for her to really, you know, prevent the hits from coming out. Ooh. Okay, there he tries to go for a um, combo put. Doesn't look like it's gonna work. Yeah, lots of air pro approaches here from Beikaku, and I think it's hard for Alice to deal with them right now. Okay, 3A. So where's he gonna try to escape here? Last time we saw that he um, either waited for a catch or he border escaped forward. So he might do one of those again. What do you think? And yeah, there, not enough time. He got crushed instead. I think he might have been waiting for a catch there, and instead he got reset several times, which is the correct option to do from Beikaku. If you think your opponent is waiting for you to do a border escape catch, you take advantage of that, and you get greedy, you um, reset your pressure, and you just try to take advantage of that. Okay, Typhoon is on the clock. There he does throw out the J6A because he knows that he's too far away from him to continue with J5A pressure on Okizeme, but Beikaku's waiting for that. Thousand Spear Doll does catch a border escape attempt. And again, those air approaches from Beikaku are so strong. Notice how whenever Beikaku jumps up like that right there, he is not actually doing high jumps. He is just doing regular neutral jumps, falling back down, and then mixing up into either a ambiguous J2A cross-up or a fake cross-up where he falls back down and does 5A. Diamond Dust. Ooh, he tried to go for a land cancel sort of juke where he does the hit, and then usually Mei Ling goes into 2A, so you low block automatically, but there he tried to do the charge 6A, you know, to try to catch him off guard, but looks like Ariri was uh, able to react to that. So a lot of really interesting things that we've seen so far in this matchup. It looks like the reason why Beikaku's movement looks like this is to try to take advantage of his superior flight speed um, and Alice's lack of air unblockables to make it more difficult for Ariri to keep him out. Because you see all of his approaches are just sort of neutral jumping at him and blocking on the ground. Like there he didn't do that and he actually got punished by the doll for it. J8A there tries to catch it, J6A does catch it. 
And yeah, just continuously being patient, Beikaku staying in the air, making sure that Ariri, you know, doesn't get the chance to get that hit confirmed that he wants. Because even if Alice does hit you in the air, oftentimes she can't convert it all the way. Ooh, that's gonna be a really rough conversion! Okay, not able to finish the combo, but Ariri's in a tight spot. That's a Snow Aurora. You can tell because Ariri lost a card um, in Block Stun. Okay, J5A there does actually catch pressure. Um, or no, does catch the escape attempt. Alright, Beikaku there had to be more careful. He knew that that doll was going to attack him, but he went for the attack anyways, maybe expecting that Alice was going to throw an early J6A. Air pressure here. Okay, so there he actually gets himself crossed up. This could be really bad. And a good Okizema setup here could be enough to seal the deal. So if he texts out, Ariri could wait for him for a cross-up, or Ariri could try to follow him with a J5A if he doesn't tech out, or try to catch him with a J6A. So based on what we've seen him do before, th that's one of the options he's going to take. What do you think he's going to do here? Yeah. So he actually tries to go for the... Um, it looks like he tried waiting in place, expecting him not to tech out, but... Because of the angle where he was standing, it didn't matter too much, and he was just able to follow up on Beikaku with a regular 5A, you know, normal Alice Okizeme. Okay, fake cross-up there again. Or actually, real cross-up, depending on how you look at it, since it wasn't a J2A. Ooh, it was stomp there, not gonna be a combo. Another fake cross-up! Really, just such a dominating use of these J2A cross-ups into the um, fake cross-ups from Beikaku. Okay, and there he actually throws out the... Um... So if you go back and you see how he finished that with a 5B, one of the reasons why mailing players do that is because they know that they can't finish a combo. So instead they'll throw out 5B and say, okay, this 5B restands opponents. You can't air tech, you don't have invulnerability frames. So you're just going to be in the air in an area where I know you're going to be. So it's easier to follow up off that. And there he looks like it was, he was waiting for the air tech. Alright, J2A there. Just, oh my gosh, just putting so much pressure on Alice with J2A. Okay. And there, again, Ariri waiting for that catch, and he throws out the um, F5A to beat it. Okay, there he makes the wrong prediction on which way he was going to wake up, so he follows up with J5A. But yeah, Beikaku dominating this round, I think, a lot more, simply because of how his pressure has been working out, and how he's been making some really good conversions off of neutral situations. Okay, and there, you can see how he sort of you know, angles in and out of that movement string to bait Alice out into throwing a button that he can easily block and then go in for pressure. And Ariri's waiting for that, that's why you don't see him throwing out so many buttons right here. Chicken blocking there to try to escape. Alright, and it looks like he's able to get doll activation to activate, but he's back in the corner already. Not gonna be a combo? Yeah, Ariri just having... You know, being forced to show so much respect because of Mailing's movement speed and her gigantic J2A. And something that you notice is that there actually a Riri is, and he did it for the second time, he did a chicken block um, neutral jump uh, to escape air pressure, or to escape pressure, instead of trying to border escape normally. Probably because he's, you know, thinking that there's going to be a lot of untight pressure strings, so that's the option he's going for. Okay, J2A is there, blocking those, air tech. So now we're in an air pressure situation. Here, here are a couple of things that can happen. If Ariri continues blocking this, um, Beikaku could go down with a big air unblockable and catch him falling closer to the ground. However, if um, Ariri tries flying out of this, Beikaku right here could land on the ground and immediately go for an instant air J5A to try to catch that movement. He could also try border escaping, which might be the best choice to border escape forward at this angle, because if you do that, even if he tries going for an instant air J5A, it's gonna whiff because the border escape cancels the block stun and propels you forward. So. Those are most of the options that Ariri has here. He could also try pressing J5A, but let's see what he does here. Okay, he's gonna keep blocking, 
And Baycocker responds to that thinking he's going to fly out, so that's why you see him jump back up with the J5A instead of waiting for him to fall back down. Here, Ariri is falling back down, so he's really close to the ground at this point. Baycocker might go for an air unblockable. Oh, no, he doesn't. He actually expects him to try to fly out again, so he goes in for the J5A again. You know, these are the kind of decisions you have to make when you're in these air pressure situations. Is my opponent going to keep blocking? Are they going to try to fly out? Are they going to border escape? You have to pay a lot of attention to that. Ooh, using the doll spinners there to actually cover that area in front of him, where Beikaku was previously dominating so much with those J2As. Really good use of um, positioning there by Ariri. Okay, Mountain Vapor is showing up. Ariri does have a little bit of a life deficit, and here he's going to try to go for the J2As, Beikoku. And there that F5A is going to probably... Okay, yeah, he cancels that into a 2-2, so it's more safe. Wow, really just expecting um, Ariri to try to... Yeah, there, he was waiting for that the entire time. Whenever you see a man resetting those pressure strings so slowly, trying to encourage you to kind of jump out, they're waiting for that, and Beikoku was definitely waiting for that. It's like, you know what, I can just sit on top of this, I know that you're going to try to escape, and as soon as you escape, bam, J5A, I'm going to catch that. And yeah, really amazing stuff by both of them. So I think, you know, sort of taking taking away from this game, we saw a lot of interesting neutral tactics going on. Beikoku definitely doing a lot of chicken blocking in the air, trying to take advantage of Alice's lack of air unblockables, while Ariri, on the other hand, kind of what he was doing towards the end there was he tried throwing out more dolls, um, and then using the doll spinners to try to cover that area, and making it more difficult for him to control that. I think that's kind of a... Uh, at least, you know, watching this um, particular set, that's kind of what defined this matchup for it, was the ability to control that space right there. And, you know, amazing stuff from Pressure and Okizema by both of them. And honestly, this was an incredible set. I've never seen Beikoku play before, but I'm pretty glad that I did. And I'm glad you guys are going to get to see it now, too. So thanks for watching. Slay